Hey fam, MDB here, and I'm going to say something I've never said on the channel. I actually like to do a little bit of bird watching. Um, you know, wrens, finches, uh, some species of pigeon, uh, robins, they all, you know, fly around in my local area, and, you know, I'll photograph them occasionally. But here's the big problem. Bird species all across North America and in different parts of the world are declining. They're declining very, very rapidly. Um, a lot of people aren't quite sure why. A lot of people think there's multiple reasons. Today, I want to address just one possibly big reason. Today, we're covering neonics. They're a class of chemicals that is potentially causing a massive die-off of bird species, many, many insects and pollinators that we crucially need for our food supply and ultimately us. So yeah, it's pretty bad. Stay tuned. Now, neonics is a shorthand term for the class of chemicals called neonicotinoids. But for the rest of this video, I'll simply be referring to this class of chemicals as neonics. Now, chemically, and this is important, neonics are nicotine-like neurotoxin insecticides that were first developed in the 1990s and have been used lawns, uh, crops throughout the U.S. and other parts of America, um, golf courses, and also um, a decent number of pet treatments, pet hair treatments. And currently, this class of insecticide is more commonly used than any other type of insecticide or fungicide out there on the market today. And they include trade names like the ones I'm showing you on the screen right now, which are the five most common neonics used in agriculture today. And just to give you an idea of the wide scale usage of this class of chemicals in agriculture today, half, and I do mean half, of all US cropland is exposed in some form to neonics. And this includes 90% of cropland used for corn, 30% of cropland used for soybeans, and 79% of cropland dedicated to wheat. And, and most times, actually, neonics aren't sprayed wholesale onto crops like a lot of other pesticides and fungicides are. No, actually, 8 billion pounds of neonics are used to coat the seeds of uh, crops. We'll come back to that term, seed-coated crops, later on in the video because it turns out to be very important when we refer to the regulation of neonics in U.S. agriculture. But for right now, just keep these two things in mind. Neonics are actually fairly, fairly low cost compared to a lot of uh, chemical sprays and seed coatings out there. And, you know, a lot of farmers see neonics as a, uh, um, you know, chemical assist to other popular pesticides and fungicides and whatever. So a lot of agriculture experts see neonics as a way to solve multiple problems all in one package. So let's step back for a moment and ask that one fundamental question. Why are neonics so good at their job, so good at killing those bugs and pests that can, you know, devastate our, our crops? Well, on a very fundamental level, neonics act as nerve agents for insects. They simply attach to the nerve cells of insects, overstimulate them until the insect eventually dies. Upon exposure to neonics, a lot of insects will exhibit, you know, twitching and confusing behavior, followed by paralysis and eventually death. Even when these insects are exposed to, you know, a small amount or a non-lethal dose of the neonics chemical, they usually experience some disruption to a critical life function, such as their fertility or even their immune system response. Point is, they're not really having a great time. But one of the key problems about neonics is they kind of kill indiscriminately, not just killing the pests and little buggers that, you know, destroy crops. They can actually kill a lot of pollinators, uh, say butterflies and bees. Um, so let's talk about them real quick. I mean, I'm sure you've heard in the news how honeybee colonies have been decimated time and time again over the past 
decade, and no one seems to have a clue as to what's going on. Um, for example, I believe between October 2020 and um, April 2021, managed honeybee colonies experienced a loss of 45%. And that only represents the second largest mass die-off in managed honeybee colonies. There was an even more massive die-off recently uh, in the 2023-2024 season in which 50% of all managed honeybee colonies experienced a die-off. My heart goes out to the bees. Now, a lot of scientists, researchers make the correct point that, you know, honeybees and other pollinators, you know, their die-off affects our food chain since these creatures, you know, they pollinate a lot of the plants that produce our food. But you know who they also affect? My favorite animal, birds. Organizations like the American Bird Conservancy have been sounding the alarm that, you know, neonics are basically wholesale killing off the insects that a lot of birds depend on to sustain themselves, you know, and their offspring. Um, in addition, the neonics, turns out, are polluting waterways that some of these birds depend on as well. And, you know, some industry experts and, you know, industry insiders have fought back at the, against this notion, you know, indicating that neonics were formulated specifically that they don't, you know, cross the blood-brain barrier of animals outside of, you know, the insect world, uh, um, among others. And now that I mentioned it, you may be thinking to yourself, well, how did these neonics end up in waterways? Well, I'll explain. Neonics can be applied uh, mostly in two ways. They can be sprayed and, you know, drenched upon crops, as you may have seen certain tractors do in videos, or the seeds themselves can be coated with the neonics and planted like that. But here's the thing, as studies have shown, irrespective of whether, you know, that plant had a coated seed or whether it was drenched, about 95% of the neonics um, chemical remains in the soil and only about two to 5% of the neonics chemical is absorbed into the plants itself and often into the, you know, the fruit, the corn, the soybean, the wheat, the apple, whatever. But that 95% of the neonics chemical that's in the soil, well, as you can imagine, when it rains, soil runoff gets into local waterways, and that's how your waterway is now polluted with neonics insecticide. Now, I hope I've pretty much painted a picture for you of how and why neonics are so ubiquitous in our environment. And with that, I will definitely plug our website. AlchemistExpress.com is, you know, our personal wholesaling uh, formulations uh, incubator for the personal care and cosmetics industry. There you can take courses on, you know, fine fragrances, preservatives, uh, formulations in general, as well as have uh, access to a lot of cosmetic bases and raw ingredients. Right now we have a face wash, various Castile soaps, shampoos, we have rice water shampoo, um, turmeric uh, a face wash with kojic acid, um, and we keep adding products pretty much every week. So naturally you want to ask, how does this affect us, us human beings? Well, unfortunately, the number of studies done on the effects of neonics on human beings is quite small, and a lot of experts agree that the methods used in those studies are fairly weak. So we probably won't have the full answer to that question for a number of years. Much of the chemical and scientific industry that's still in support of neonics pretty much hangs their hat on the fact that when neonics were formulated, they were proven not to be able to cross the mammalian um, blood-brain barrier. You know, basically proving that neonics can never be used as nerve agents against humans dogs and you know all the cuddly things that we love but there does seem to be growing evidence that neonics can possibly promote the growth of cancerous tumors as well as affect invertebrates and vertebrates alike but even looking beyond that humans are not the only species or not the only creatures on this planet we do depend on other creatures like the pollinators i mentioned to actually grow enough food to feed our massive population and so we've basically come to our final question. Is anybody looking into this? Is anyone looking at neonics and asking, hey, 
what real damage is being done to either us or the creatures that pretty much sustain our food supply. Well, you'll be happy to know that many governments around the world have taken steps to either outright ban neonic use in outdoor places or severely restrict their usage in certain circumstances. But of course, it's definitely not the case in most of America. So here's the lowdown. The EU since 2018 has banned the use of neonics in most outdoor spaces uh, throughout the EU uh, with very, very few uh, exceptions. Um, the one criticism many companies in the EU face is that they still export uh, a lot of neonics to developing countries, so now it's their problem. Canada, our neighbor to the north, still allows for neonic usage, but under very, very tight regulations. For example, neonics can't be used anywhere near you know, bodies of water where potential runoffs can occur very easily, affecting not just humans, but other wildlife in general. Surprisingly, and this was a shock to my system when I found this out, New Jersey actually has the strictest limitations on neonic usage in the United States. But I want to talk about the one big loophole that allows a lot of neonic usage to go unchecked in the US. You see, back in the video when I mentioned, you know, neonic covered seeds, when the seeds themselves are covered with neonics, they actually largely fall outside of EPA regulations. It's only when the you know, pesticide or fungicide is sprayed on crops does the EPA have the full authority and weight to step in and regulate them. When the seeds themselves are covered by neonics, the companies that you know, sell and distribute them can largely get away without reporting you know, health and hazard data to the proper authorities. For me, and I'm sure many, many of you out there, this seems completely insane, right? I mean, a little small change in methodology, a little small change in method, and you have a loophole that could potentially screw over the health of millions and millions of us. But that seems to be the story of American bureaucracy today, in which the small oligarchs and elites in the big agribusiness and big food while the rest of us suffer the brutal, brutal consequences. But don't let me just rattle off a bunch of stats. Please tell me what you think. Uh, leave a comment below. Please like, share, subscribe. I definitely want to hear from you guys. Until next time, this has been Million Dollar Batchmaker. Keep formulating.